Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Meet Your Future session. In these sessions, we hear from people who work at lots of different jobs, and you have, you have the opportunity to find out what they do and to ask them your questions. My name is Jamie, and I'm your host today. I work at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, and it's my job to help young people find out more about the different jobs and pathways that are available out there to them. One of the ways that you can do this is on the GMAX website, gmacs.co.uk, which has lots of information for young people who live in Greater Manchester. Today, though, we're going to hear from Adam White, who works at Bentley Motors. Bentley Motors are based in Crewe, and Adam is a HR digital project specialist and is also one of the co-founders of the Be Proud LGBTQ Plus Network. Adam is going to talk to you today about what it's like working for Bentley, what they do, and how the company ensures it's inclusive for LGBTQ plus people. If you've got any questions for Adam, please put them in the chat and we will have time to answer some of them at the end. I'm now delighted to hand over to Adam White. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yep. All good, Adam. Brilliant. OK, so as uh, as Jamie very kindly introduced me, I'm uh, Adam White. Um, yes, my title is HR Digital Project Specialist, but I will let you know what that actually means in, in real terms um, throughout the presentation, because it sounds a little bit like words to me as well. So. So, yeah, welcome to Meet Your Future, Being Proud at Work, uh, hosted by myself on behalf of Bentley Motors and also on behalf of our LGBTQ plus um, colleague network, Be Proud. So I'll take you through a few things today. Um, so I'll give a bit of an introduction to myself. Uh, I'll also take you through a bit of Bentley Motors history because I'm sure you've heard of the name Bentley, but perhaps don't know um, some of its history and how local it actually is to, to Manchester and the surrounding area. Uh, I'll take you through the Be Proud um, LGBTQ plus network, what we stand for, what our aims and goals are and how we have supported the organisation in the past two or so years. Um, and then also I'll focus a little bit on the early careers opportunities that we've actually got live now for 2022. So that'll be mainly focusing around apprenticeships as we are in National Apprenticeship Week. And then obviously at the end we'll have some time for questions. So please don't be shy. You know, questions are absolutely fantastic. They make it so much more interactive than me just talking to a screen. Um, so please. You know, anything, uh, no, no, no questions or silly questions, but please um, take the opportunity to, to ask. I'm not saying I can answer them all, but I can certainly take them away and I can certainly try and answer them as well. So in terms of an introduction then, um, I'll give you a bit of an overview of who I am. So as Jamie said, my name is Adam White. Um, I am gay, gay man. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I currently live in Nantwich in Cheshire. So it's about 20 minutes away from work in Crewe, uh, which is nice and easy commute. Um, but originally I am from a place called Ormskirk. In fact, it's a little village called Orton just outside of Ormskirk. So that's where I was born and raised. Um, and then I went up to York for university and then came back down to Cheshire after that. Um, my favourite food is definitely Italian, um, although I was telling uh, Jamie before um, everybody joined the call. Have a, had a weekend of previous weekend of just seeming to eat eat anything. You know, I'm I'm not really that picky, uh, but Italian is definitely probably the, the favourite. My interests as a outside of work uh, probably cars, which probably connects to work quite nicely. My first word was car. Um, I'm also into property and renovation. So I'm currently the house that you see behind me in the middle of renovating that house. This is my second house. I've renovated, um, so that keeps me busy and out of trouble for the most for the most part. Um, I did originally, when I was younger, want to be an architect, but I realised I wasn't very good at maths, and also didn't fancy spending seven years at university as well trying to struggle to do maths. But anybody who does wish to do that, um, absolutely fantastic. I do like to travel as much as I can. Obviously, the past couple of years have put a stop to that mostly, uh, but you can see some of the pictures on the right hand side. Um, down at the bottom there, that's myself and my partner in Canada, which is fantastic. Eating and socialising, um, probably one of my biggest hobbies, so to speak. So yeah, really enjoy doing that and seeing my friends as much as I possibly can. And you can see some of the pictures 
on the right hand side there. And then what I wanted to share as well, it's probably one of my proudest moments um, over the past couple of years, which is being recognised in Attitude magazine as one of the 101 LGBTQ plus trailblazers for 2021. Um, which meant I had a write-up in Attitude magazine, which you can see taken uh, front and centre there. And I had a bit of my red carpet moment at the top right there as well. And the most uh, special part of that event that happened in December last year was that I was actually able to take um, pretty much most of our network members down to that event and we supported the charity and fundraising at that event as well. So we got to mingle with some celebrities, um, got some great photo opportunities and was it really able to support. I think we raised about £7,000 in the end. Um, for providing LGBTQ plus scholarships at, I believe, Hull University. So that was an absolutely fantastic win for uh, personally and also from Bentley and our network as well. So I think that's an overview of, of me and, and who I am. But again, any questions, please um, add them at the end. So that, now I really want to talk about my career profile, my career and, and education profile, really. Um, so at the top there was Ormskirk Sixfold. So that's where I attended. So um, that's where I went for three years, actually. And I want to focus on why it was three years. So um, initially, obviously, it's two years doing your A-levels. But unfortunately, my first year, I didn't get the grades that I wanted to progress. And it would have made it really, really difficult to head on to university to do what I wanted to do, because that was what I really wanted to do. Um, so I took the approach that I wanted to reset. I changed um, some of my subjects to something that um, was perhaps a little bit more inter interesting to me um, and understanding the difference between GCSE and A level. Um, I was able to take courses and eventually get the grades that I needed to to get into university. So in 2013, I applied to York St. John University, obviously, as it says in the title, up in York, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, really, really excelled at university. It was the first time really that I'd been kind of not interested, I wasn't disinterested beforehand but really really took an interest and took ownership of my own education at that point uh, because it was something I was really really invested in doing um, and it was a fantastic opportunity to meet new people move away from home and really kind of stand on my own two feet for the first time um, throughout that time at university um, I worked at home base which is down the road and then I eventually became a management trainee and campus brand manager for Enterprise Rent-A-Car um, and it was that point where um, I was able to move into the HR space as well a little bit in terms of recruitment and training. I did eventually get first in my business management BA honours degree, which is again, really, really proud moment. Um, if you'd have asked me at the very beginning of that university journey whether that was going to be the case, I probably would not have believed you, but certainly it just shows how you definitely can take charge of your own education and kind of set yourself at your own course and direction. So. Fantastic, uh, fantastic experience there. And then I moved on to the Bentley HR graduate scheme. So it was actually whilst I was working at Enterprise rent car that a friend of mine uh, had a relative that worked at Bentley Motors. And although I'd heard of Bentley Motors, obviously as most people have, I hadn't actually up until that point considered it as a career opportunity. Um, so I looked into it a little bit more and found that it was a HR graduate programme. Um, so applied for the role, went through the interview process, assessment centres, interviews, et cetera, et cetera, and managed to, to get the job, which was absolutely fantastic. I, again, didn't quite believe that I was, I was being offered that opportunity. Um, so while I was a graduate, the graduate programme lasts two years. So between, it was 2016 to 2018. So I was based in the future talent department at that time, working with school and university liaison. So actually the, the kind of work that I'm doing now presenting to you, it was focused around doing that but for schools in the local community and within the Cheshire community as well, which is a really fantastic opportunity. It was a rotational placement, so I moved into our HR operations team, which what you class as real HR, um, dealing with people, um, grievances, disciplinaries, and also progression and development as well, which is really interesting. Um, picked up some strategic business projects. That, that's what they like to call it when it was projects that nobody else wanted to pick up, but as a graduate, I didn't really have much choice. So. They gave me, uh, you might have heard of it, GDPR and Brexit, as well as lovely topics to really get my teeth stuck into. But the, uh, the experiences I gained from that were really, really interesting. So don't say no to any opportunity, all I'll, I'll say is that one. Um, I then stepped out of HR briefly for about seven months into our central project management office. So that is a function that exists across the company, dealing with projects um, from all different functions and, and all different levels as well. And they help them steer and navigate those projects throughout the organisation. 
And that's really where I got the first insight to what effective project management looked like. I felt like I had a natural tendency because I'm a bit of a control freak to probably excel at project management. And so from that point onwards, it really put me down the, the project management route rather than the HR necessarily, the, the people side of it. I did also do a production placement, so work within our production department group, uh, as I'll tell you a little bit later, is our single uh, manufacturing area. And I was able to work in the wood shop for a month. So working with the apprentices and some of the skilled technicians down on the line to produce some of our um, wooden trims within our vehicles, which are absolutely phenomenal, but the processes that they go through, um, absolutely incredible. So um, a really, really fantastic experience. I mean, it's good to see a different side of the organisation that a lot of people don't necessarily get to do. Uh, then after that, um, two years on the graduate programme, was very fortunate to be offered a permanent position um, as HR Digital Transformation Officer. So it sounds like a very fancy title, but all it meant was that I was supporting the HR Digital Transformation Manager on HR's journey to digitalisation, because although Bentley is seen as probably one of the world's most leading and forefront of the vehicle technology, Unfortunately, that didn't necessarily at the time uh, ring true for all of our internal processes, so how we worked internally. A lot of it at that time um, was paper based. A lot of it was very manual processes and we recognised the ability that we needed to move that all into systems, digital technology. Um, so I helped a lot, helped my manager at the time a lot with the digital strategy, setting out what that looked like for the next five years. Got involved in some really interesting technology called robot, robotic process automation and applied that to some of our processes. Um, I led the way with, because we're owned by Volkswagen, um, we led the way in terms of our first user and device policy for one of our systems, which was a very complex and, and arduous process, but I finally got there at the end, which is good. I also started my Agile project management certification as well. So a different way of managing projects than the traditional waterfall approach, which means um, it's specific or can be specific to systems and implementation as well, allowing you to move a little bit quicker without the um, without the traditional um, methods behind you. And then from 2019 then, um, I started my role as HR Digital Project Specialist or HR Digital Project Manager. During that time, uh, I was the co-founder of Bentley's first network, um, Be Proud, which was absolutely fantastic opportunity. Um, I am also now a member of Driving Pride, which is a cross automotive LGBTQ plus network. Very, very formative at the moment. We're just kind of setting out what we want to do as an organisation, setting ourselves up in the right way. So hopefully watch this space uh, for some of the, the work that we'll do. Um, I'm now project manager for Success Factors, which is our HR digital platform. So everything that we do, managing people day to day, when we do our um, yearly um, appraisals, everything is in one system. Well, that's what we're working towards. Um, and then I also did another project management qualification called Print to Agile. So the blending of that traditional project management practices with some of the more agile practices as well. So I'm now both certified in Agile and Agile Print 2 project manager, uh, practitioner and foundation. Um, and you can see a little bit in the centre there, some of these pictures focus around what we've done as a network at the top here. This is our Fantastic Be Proud network um, about probably a year ago now when it was actually sunny. Um, the car, which I won't actually give the name of because I believe I sent you some challenges around what that was called. Uh, myself and my partner as uh, something that I'm again really proud of as well. I was nominated to go down to Blenheim Palace um, in 2019 uh, for the world's biggest gathering of Bentleys across the world, which I was able to take a vehicle down there myself and had a fantastic day. Um, some of my project teams that I've worked with previously, really proud of our implementations. Um, and then throughout that career at Bentley, you know, made some really, really great connections and friends throughout the graduate and undergraduate programmes. And that's us at 24 hours of Spa a couple of years ago, actually in Bentley's pit lane, um, working on some of the vehicles. And what was great to see is the people that were working on those vehicles were the people that worked in our factory, which is, uh, is really, really cool. Moving on slightly then, I'll tell you a little bit more about Bentley. Um, so, uploaded for you. Click. Fantastic. So, as you can see here, that is our factory. We are a single point uh, manufacturer. So, that means that all of our vehicles, all the Bentleys that you see across the world, um, come out of this one factory in Sunny Crew. And you can see there. Um, so, especially when you're, you know, somewhere else, even in the UK, when you see a Bentley, it's, it's quite cool to think, ah, oh, that's come out of the factory that I work in. 
Um, we've got about 4,000 colleagues that work on one site. We do have some regional locations as well, but probably only a handful of people. We were 100 years old in 2019. We had a great celebration of that. And we are a key member of the VW Group. The VW Group actually has probably about 30 different subsidiaries um, with about 12 automotive brands in there. So the likes of Seat, Skoda, um, Audi, Porsche, uh, Lamborghini, also Ducati, motorbike, um, but also truck and bus, so man, truckology, um, and many, many other subsidiaries such as financial institutions as well that support the different kind of different aspects of the organization. As you can see there, so our product range, our current product range is the Continental GT, Continental GT convertible, the Flying Spur, um, the Bentayga, and now the two, the one at the top and the one at the bottom, the Bacalar and the Blower, are what we call our Halo product range. So only 12 of them were ever produced. Um, they were sold out pretty much as soon as we set out that we were going to make them, which is absolutely fantastic, but that is something that we want to highlight more. We have our bespoke arm called Mulliner, um, who make and produce these vehicles on a very limited run. So Bacalar really incorporates our future direction as an, as an organization and where we want to get to with the look, styling and innovation within our vehicles. And the blower also looks back to our long history um, in terms of recreating one of our previous and historic, um, historic marks really. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic to see. So again, 12 of those were produced each, and they, started, they sold out within, within minutes, I think. So really, really popular products. That's really where we are, where we're located. So I think we're about an hour south of Manchester, maybe a little bit less if you get a good run on the M6, but that's very, very rare, so probably about an hour. So where we started then, so uh, this gentleman here on the right-hand side is Walter Owen Bentley. Um, he was born an engineer, uh, with a great flair for innovation and natural curiosity about mechanics. Founded Bentley down in Cricklewood in London, so not where we're currently based, in 1919. And his mission was to create a fast car, a good car, and the best in its class, which I'm probably a little bit biased, but I would say Bentley definitely still are. Um, his fast sporting cars famously won the Gruden Le Mans 24 hour race five times between 1924 and 1930. And that really helped cement the brand's reputation for performance and also for comfort because obviously they're very, very long races and you don't want to be particularly uncomfortable whilst racing in them. Um, and again, almost a century later, or over a century later now, 103 years, um, Walter Owen's vision continues to guide our beliefs, actions and ambitions. And that is definitely true. We try and embody his perception for the brand and where he wanted it to go in everything that we do, whilst also making sure that we are looking forward to the future and continually innovating as well. So I won't go into all of this specifically, but this kind of pulls out some of the key um, experiences in our over 100 year history. So back in 1919, you can see that the company was founded, like I, I said, uh, in, the 20, in the 1920s, the Bentley boys and girls dominate the endurance racing scene, uh, really cementing that brand, as I just said. And then it wasn't until 1938 we actually set up our factory in Crewe, which is our, which is where we are currently based. And some parts of that factory do feel like you're in 1938 at times, but um, most of it is, is a lot more luxurious than, than it was in 1938. And it was actually, the factory was originally built for the preparations for World War II as an aeroplane factory. Um, I think the production started in 1948, but it was between 1938 and 1948 that we transitioned up to sort of Crewe. 1952, the Artec Continental was launched. 98, saw VW buy us, so before that we weren't owned by VW Group. First Continental launched in 2002. Um, and then it wasn't until 2016, so there was a bit of a gap there uh, where we were not struggling as an organisation, but really helping us define where we wanted to go as an organisation. And then 2016, we launched the Bentley Bentayga, which was the uh, world's most luxurious SUV and also at the time one of the quickest in the world. So obviously you can see how much we've uh, progressed since 2016. Incidentally that was the year that I joined the company, um, not making any connection between the two myself, but I'll let you make that assumption. Um, and then back in 2019 we really set our vision uh, for the future with our AXP 100 concept car, which again embodies all of the kind of really innovative technology, you know, natural and sustainable um, materials throughout the vehicle, then start to move into the plug-in SUV hybrid and battery electric vehicle technology. 
in 2019, 2020 saw us release our Beyond 100 strategy, which pulls all of this together and outlines where we want to go for the next 100 years. Um, so it's very, very exciting um, to see and we're making massive advancements through that um, and a bit of inside, in, uh, inside in information that um, 2022, although against a lot of hardship, was actually our success, most successful year in terms of cars delivered to customers as well. And that's definitely something we want to monopolize on and increase in the future. And everybody throughout the organization is a key part of that by making sure that we are all focused to task. So moving on slightly, it's actually, Bentley is a very surprisingly sustainable company, uh, which you might not think of because our vehicles previously uh, and still are one of the most powerful internal combustion engines in the, in, in the world. Um, however, to offset that, we have a lot of different um, lot, a lot of different practices throughout the organization that really reduce that carbon footprint. And we are actually the first luxury automotive factory in the UK to be certified as a carbon neutral site by the Carbon Trust, which is an absolutely fantastic thing um, to be awarded. You can see some of the innovations that we've got going on around the factory there. We do have our Bentley Apiary, which is fantastic. We have Bentley Bees that produce uh, Bentley honey, which you can buy in a colleague shop, which is really, really tasty. I have it on my uh, toast in the morning sometimes. And also around the site, you can see an example of our living walls there to really bring a lot more biodiversity to the site as well, because we're really conscious of the pollution of our vehicles. But then also we are signed up to the charter to make sure that we are producing electric vehicles by 2025 as well. So not a million miles away from the current date. Uh, we are also um, the largest factory in Europe that has the most solar panels on our site as well. So you might be able to see in the picture there that all of our factory buildings have uh, solar panels on and also they have been built over our car park as well. So um, all of that reusable and sustainable energy has helped that uh, certification for carbon neutrality. So that really is a little bit about um, be proud really as, as a, sorry about Bentley Motors as a, as a company. Uh, again, any questions on that later on, please drop them in the chat. So now I'll tell you, take you through a bit about what being proud at Bentley looks like and what the Be Proud LGBTQ plus network has been able to do. So that's us. Um, you might have seen that picture early before. So we've got um, a lot more members than that now. That was quite early on. And that is us in front of our unifying spur, which is Bentley's physical and visual commitment to our diversity and inclusion across all different sectors of diversity and inclusion, whether that's um, ethnicity, race, religion, sexual orientation, um, gender, uh, vet, uh, veterans, um, disability, uh, you know, across all of it, it incorporates, incorporates all of it, but particularly for us, uh, it incorporates the commitment to the LGBTQ plus community and colleagues. So a bit about the network then and what it delivers. So our mission as a as a network is to bring together LGBTQ plus colleagues and allies who are an extremely important part of our network, provide a safe space for colleagues to connect, celebrate pride throughout the year, not just um, during Pride Month, and bring visibility to LGBT, LGBTQ plus topics at Bentley and in our local community as well. And you can see on the right hand side, we have our working group members. Um, and then we also have a wider network meeting on a monthly basis because we really on the right hand side are the people that drive forward some of the actions. Whereas there is a lot of people in the organization that are a part of that community, but don't necessarily have the time or the other skill to be able to be involved in leading those activities and pushing them forwards, but also still want to understand what we're doing as a, as a network and also as an organization. So I'll take you through, through some of this and where we started. Um, so it was back in 2017, myself and my co-founder Tom Dawes, who was also on the graduate program, but in engineering, um, realized that there wasn't much representation from LGBTQ plus colleagues throughout the, the organization. So we didn't really have any role models that we knew about at that time that were really at the forefront. And we didn't notice that Bentley was doing anything in that space necessarily. Again, quite a traditional organization up until that point. And the reason from an external perspective that we really wanted to set up this network was because of some of the data that you can see at the bottom here. So this comes from a survey in 2018. So it is a little bit out of date now, but I think it still definitely rings true. So 40% of LGBTQ plus people had experienced a homophobic incident in the past 12 months. 
Two thirds of LGBTQ plus couples would not hold hands in public for fear of a negative reaction. One in five LGBTQ plus people have received negative comments or conduct from a work colleague. So this is where it starts to get into a work context. And also 53% in the engineering sector are not openly LGBTQ plus in the workplace, which is, is disgusting to me, to be honest. You know, that figure is really, really horrific. Um, and particularly because our two biggest functions in the organisation are manufacturing and engineering, you know, that's a that's a really significant uh, piece of information for us. So when we launched to the business only back uh, in April 2021, so we've been working for about a year to get ourselves ready to release to the organisation. We actually took this to our board of managers um, and showed them these figures. And it was extremely surprising for them to see that because previously um, they hadn't been aware that there was such a, um, a societal issue still with LGBTQ plus representation. Um, and I think it's a lot better than it used to be. However, there is still a long way to go. And then especially when you focus on those particular sectors from an organisational perspective, um, there is still definitely a long way to go, which we wanted to support and help with. So some of the things that we set out to deliver in 2021, and um, these are actually all things that we achieved, which are absolutely fantastic. So there's a bit of a visual there. You can see back in, it was April, we launched the network uh, in a, spectacularly LGBTQ plus and Bentley fashion with a TED talk with Darren Stiles. Now, if you haven't heard of Darren Stiles, he's not the naughty's DJ, as I uh, wrongly assumed that he was for those of you who might know who Darren Stiles is. Um, he is actually Darren Stiles OBE, who is the owner and um, the owner of Attitude magazine. So he owns the publishing company that owns Attitude magazine. He's very, very experienced. He is a Bentley owner himself. Um, very involved with the um, automotive industry, uh, is a gay man himself and has really helped shape our network and been involved with Attitude magazine throughout the, the previous year, which has been absolutely fantastic. It was very well received by our, um, by our colleagues. And it was something that when we've done a review for this year of what we want to deliver, it's something that people want to hear more of. They want to hear more external perspectives from within the LGBTQ plus community. Um, so on the second part, paving our way to pride. So we grew and promoted our network to obviously the numbers that you, you saw on the previous slide. Um, we took as part of that VW group as well, it was fantastic to reach out and have communications with people from all over Europe and all over the world that are involved in the other VW group run uh, LGBTQ plus networks. And we actually took part in the Ida Hobbit campaign that group run. So International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, which which resulted in this image here, which was designed to show how colourful the VW group was. Um, I am there somewhere, I can't remember what line I'm on myself and some of my network colleagues appear on there as well. And you can see some of the brands, a bit small at the bottom there that were involved in that. So that was a really great campaign that was communicated across the group and also in some of the uh, other areas, uh, local news as well. So it was an absolutely fantastic opportunity to get involved. We pulled together a diversity video that really explained to our colleagues and our community what that what diversity meant for us, that heavily featured the vehicle that you can see there, the youth bikes there. And also it seems like a very small point, but we were able to include pronoun choice for all of our colleagues in our email signatures. So again, really seems like a really small point, but it's just those small things that you can chip away from as an organization that makes people feel that if they weren't able to identify themselves previously in the way that they would like to, they are able to do so now. And that is formally recognised and officialised from the from the organisation. Um, we also moving on to our pride in the community. So we, as an organisation, as Bentley Motors, we supported the Speaking of Pride video series, which you can see down here. So that involved a number of different celebrities. So Lady Phil, Rosie Jones, um, and Tom Allen, that were sat in the back of our unifying spur, actually uh, reading some uh, poetry and. Um, and other literature from LGBTQ plus colleagues in the community. And that was a really great engagement piece. Um, and it was great to see that reflected in, in the wider community as well across, across the reach of, of the UK. Um, Pims Lane, so that's where we live. That's where we live in Crewe. What we were able to do was get, we got pride flags all down, all down the road during the month, of, during pride month in June. And also, which I'll hopefully show you a little bit later, is this is what we wanted it to look like. So we got two pride crossings so where people in the factory walk to and from, from a daily, on a daily basis from the car park, we're actually able to get the progress, progress flag colours 
painted on the road as well. Um, I'm not on site very much, very uh, much at the moment, but when I did go onto site last week, those um, diversity crossings still look fantastic. We were told that they may start to wash away because of the paint that they were put on with the road, but they actually haven't washed away at all. So I think that's a little bit of pride power in, in making their, keeping them on site in two different locations. Um, we worked with our local uh, government, local community, for to create. Was a fantastic opportunity as well. Um, we've also engaged with a local community, a local um, charity called Body Positive, um, and they work specifically in Crewe and across Cheshire, uh, bringing LGBTQ plus and sex and sexual orientation education to the community as well. So we're at the very beginning of that journey. We've got our one of our leads that works in our production environment as well that has just been signed and certified to be a an official. Uh, leader for their organisation, which is absolutely fantastic. And we hope to get involved in many, many different fundraising opportunities throughout the year. They also focus on, which is a really interesting and perhaps um, myself naively aspect of the LGBTQ plus community, which is actually the older people in the community. So 60 and 60 plus who um, Body Positive work with um, on, a, on a great basis throughout Cheshire, which is really interesting that we hope to support throughout the year. We supported as an organisation, in fact, we didn't support, we empowered, as they called it, the Attitude Magazine 101 Trailblazer Award event last year, as I've touched on before. We did want to enter Manchester Pride. Unfortunately, that was the parade was stopped um, just before we were able to do so last year. We did work with our Manchester dealership to put out some content and to make that connection to LGBTQ plus colleagues. Uh, and also we, we got involved in a lot of fundraising activities throughout the, throughout the throughout the year as well. So that really conceptualizes what we did as a network. This really, I won't go into these, but wanted to share with you how we work as a, as a network as well. So it's really our safe space and what we um, aim to achieve in each of our meetings to make sure that all colleagues do have that safe space and they're all protected as well. If anybody wants this to be shared afterwards, I'll be, be more than happy to do so. I really wanted to share these stats with you as well. So from our review of our 2021 work as a, an LGBTQ plus community, we delivered um, on our internal internet page over, over the seven day period beforehand, we had 115 views of our hub of where we put all of our information on our internet. We had 33 working group and wider group members. Uh, we'd had delivered eight wider, so monthly um, meetings. We were represented in all of our six key functions by network members. And the biggest one as to why we exist as a, as a, as a network was 100% 100 response rate to has been part of the Be Proud Network, increased your sense of belonging and opportunity to bring your true self to work, which is an absolutely wonderful thing to see. So really then what you might be all, all here for today is those early career opportunities and what they look like for 2022. So again, we're in National Apprenticeship Week. Our apprenticeship vacancies are currently live on www.bentleycareers.com. So if you do want to have a look for them, please log on. Um, I won't go into these in too much depth, but you can see there on the left hand side what our apprenticeships across Bentley look like and the different levels and the different departments that they are available in. I've included there to be really, really clear about our apprenticeship and the degree apprenticeship starting salaries because I think um, they are very, very competitive within the uh, environment. I want to shout about that. You know, you are fairly compensated as an apprentice or a degree apprentice and you will definitely involved in real responsibility you have it straight from the off um, and you would have that across any early careers program so we don't just offer apprenticeships of course we do offer graduate undergraduate and internship opportunities throughout the year uh, and they will be live throughout the year so if you're interested in anything other than an apprenticeship opportunity what i would say is still go on to bentleycareers.com and sign up for those alone internships come up throughout the year as do undergraduate opportunities graduate programs usually recruit a little bit later in the year um, and they should be live relatively soon for usually an Oct uh, September or October start throughout the year. So that really is something to focus on. Um, and again, I can share all of this and all of it is available through our Bentley Careers website as well. So I think we're a little bit ahead of time, actually, Jamie. I don't know whether you, um, you're OK for me to, to move on, but I think that was everything really that I, uh, I had to talk about. And I'm sorry if I've whistled through it very quickly, but yeah, more than happy to focus on any, any other areas that, um, that I might have skipped through a bit, a bit too quickly. But I'll uh, take your lead on that then. 
David. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much, Adam. Uh, that was a really, really um, interesting talk. Thank you so much. Um, so if anybody does have any questions for Adam, uh, please do put them in the chat and we will pick them up. I've got a few that can uh, kick us off. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, Adam, actually just going back uh, right to the start uh, and this links into the opportunities that you just uh, talked about then as well. You yourself did a graduate scheme at uh, Bentley and uh, for just in case there are any uh, listeners who aren't quite sure what a, a graduate scheme is. So once you complete university, uh, you are then a, uh, a graduate. And um, Adam, what uh, lots of companies have uh, offer graduate schemes for people who've just completed university. What, what why do they offer a, a graduate scheme, and, and what do you think the benefits of uh, doing a graduate scheme are? And uh, I'm going to try and put you back on the the main screen but uh, my team seems to be doing a little well, I'm happy for you to leave the right so just a little back on people's screens Jamie don't yeah. worry about it too much okay okay Off you so, go. yeah graduate programs themselves really to conceptualize them are a scheme uh, for a defined period of time usually um, it's usually between one and four years uh, I don't I don't think I've seen many that are any significantly much significantly longer than that um, and it really is a program of activity some of them are rotational um, and it gives you an insight a deep insight into a function I think speaking from my own experience the, the couple of benefits from a graduate program are is that you move into an organization usually with a group of people that are in, in exactly the same or similar background so I've just graduated university looking for a career and it gives you a predefined group of people to interact with um, you know, I've got friends across the organisation from starting on the graduate programme that I'm still very good friends with now, classes them as my best friends uh, from engineering, manufacturing, purchase, quality, every function you can think of. Um, what it also allows you to do is rotate throughout the organisation as well, which is what a lot of colleagues that don't start on, a, on an early careers programme might not get the ability to do. So I mentioned some of the functions that I'd worked in previously. Um, and that looks different to every graduate, but it's certainly the opportunity to work in different parts of the organisation and really be able to define what interests you. You know, I was able to do that. If you'd have asked me beforehand, would it have been project management that I was going to be involved in? I probably wouldn't have been able to answer that question, but certainly throughout the placements, I was able to see that that was something that I would really be interested in and really have the, the ability to, to do. So you would get that from a graduate programme, you'd get that from an apprenticeship programme, you'd also get some experience of that with an internship and also from our undergraduate programme. So an undergraduate programme is when you're in the middle of university, if it's allowed or if it's set up on your course to do so, where you take a year away from university, usually during the middle of your studies and actually join Bentley for a year, work as part of the organisation and then return back to university for a year. I think we're up to about 85% of those people who we have on the undergraduate programme uh, are considered and actually return on the graduate programme as well. So really continuing that link there. And that's where we start to hone and define, you know, growing our own talent internally. So, um, yeah, I think that really conceptualises some of the benefits, what, what they are really and, and what the benefits are, I think. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Um, we've had a few uh, comments and questions come through. Just want to share some of these with you, Adam. Thank so uh, we've got the, the Radcliffe School in, uh, in Oldham watching today. Hello, Radcliffe School. Um, uh, had a comment through saying that your talk was fantastic and very informative. Um, thank so thank you for that. And uh, our uh, first question from the school as well. How did you prepare for an interview at Bentley? Ah, OK. So um, it's actually a really interesting question. I researched into the organisation. Um, I spent a lot of time on the company website and also the careers website. And on the careers website, it really outlined what we looked for with our Bentley behaviours as it does now. They have changed since then, but it does exactly the same. And I was given uh, a bit of insight into what the interview would be like. So it was a competency based interview. So. Um, from my work um, throughout university, I had a, a good idea of what a competency based interview would be and also the STAR method of answering that. So what I did was take 
um, the information that was given to me, looked through it, um, then developed the ability to give the STAR technique, which is when you're answering interview questions, you focus on the situation and that you were in when it happened, the task that you were given, the action that you took in that situation um, and the result of that situation as well, which is how you should always structure your uh, interview answers. So that alongside the assessment centre, which we were given very little time to prepare, prepare for on the day, the interview was the biggest part of it. That's how I prepared. So taking as much information as I could find in the, you know, that was out there, that was given to me as part of the application process and also, also structuring my interview answers in that way, because that is how um, they were expecting you to answer. And that is definitely how you should answer. It helps keep you on task as well, rather than rambling on to a different different topic. Uh, and also helps give really, really good structure for when you are being considered after you've left the room for them to be able to pick up on different points of your of your interview answers as well. So that is definitely the biggest piece of advice I can give for that one. And that's exactly what I did. And it worked. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. The STAR technique, that definitely uh, sounds worth looking up. Could you just repeat what that, that stands for again? So it's, it's basically a way of talking about what you did and what what came of it? Yeah, so if it's a competency-based interview, you could be asked a question. So tell me about a time that you worked well as a, um, as a member of a group. Um, so you would then use the S to state the situation um, that you were in. So I was at, uh, I was at university, the T, so ST uh, is the task. So I was at university and I was given the, um, the responsibility to pull together a few of my colleagues, uh, some of my students um, to, to deliver a task. The action was what we did. So during that task, we uh, pulled together a presentation on, I don't know, candles, um, just because of the candle behind me, uh, we pulled together and that was the action and then the R in that star is the result. So how that went was it was greatly delivered by the lecturers and the, the other students um, and I received a, a first in, in that particular task. So that is an example, a really high level example of what that star technique sounds like. Uh, it's a really, really good way of, of answering questions and then stop speaking after you've given the R. If I was being pretentious, which I, I, I can be sometimes, I would also add myself um, a, another letter at the end, which would be another R, which is actually a bit of a reflective, a, re, a reflective piece, which means you've talked about the result, but also what you would do differently next time. So that ability really shows that you're able to consider your actions and actually comment on whether it was a great success or there is things that you could do to improve that. So, okay, next time I would probably uh, pull that group together a little bit earlier because we, we felt that we were a little bit rushed towards the end of the presentation preparation time, even though it was a great result. So as an example of how that would work, I think in practice. Brilliant, thank you so much for very practical mm -hmm. and tips there. Um, okay, we've got another few questions. Uh, what age can you start an undergraduate programme? Uh, it's not really related to age necessarily. Uh, the undergraduate programme will be, you would have to be at university, uh, but through that, throughout that university course, um, I think depending on your university, they have gap years after the second year mainly. It's not, it's not dependent on age, but I've seen some that do it after your first year or some between your third or fourth year, because obviously some university courses are a little bit longer. So it's not dependent on age, but it would be from a university perspective whenever they release you to do that year in the industry. Fantastic. And um, can straight people join the LGBTQ plus network? Of course, yeah, they, they are our allies. Um, you know, really, really fundamental part of our um, our network. We have a really good mix of allies from all, all genders in, in our in our network and in our working group and our wider network group as well. So with all of our diversity and inclusion networks, you know, people that aren't necessarily part of those communities. So for example, colleagues within the BAME community, you know, they would never dis, uh, discourage anybody from any community or ethnic background from, from joining at all. No, definitely, definitely not. And um, quite a personal question next. Uh, you don't have to answer this specifically, but uh, it can give young people a, a, an idea of the, the, the work that you're doing. Okay. How much do you earn is the question. Interesting. Um, so I would say that I'm very well compensated for what I do. I've been very well looked after. Um, 
and the benefits of Bentley in terms of the other incentives that aren't necessarily to connected to my salary are also very, very attractive as well. It's a great employer and we have a retention rate, or put it a different way, people's um, length of service is about 15 years. So we must be doing something right as an organisation at an average to be able to keep people for such a long period of time, especially in the, in the industry that we work in. Um, so I would say I was very, very fairly compensated for what I do um, and perhaps reaching into that second um, tax bracket. But I won't I won't tell you what that is, but I'll let you I'll let you look that up yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. And um, OK, uh, uh, next question is what car do you drive? Well, um, I actually currently don't drive a VW Group brand vehicle, which is very naughty of me, um, but we do offer a car scheme at Bentley. So for those people that join us on the graduate programme, they have access to it, and also those from the apprenticeship programme. So that means that we get vehicles provided um, throughout the VW Group, so Audi, Seat, Skoda, um, and that's a really great incentive. You know, we get a new vehicle every six months, um, that's got no miles on it and we pay a massively discounted price. Um, we have to pay for our own, well, if you join on those schemes, you join on the colleague car, so you do pay for your insurance, um, but what you get is a brand new car every six months for, you know, a lot less than you would pay externally uh, and also without any any deposit required. Wow, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, um, I'd just like to, oh, um, OK, we've got a message saying their lesson is due to finish now, but we'd just like to say a massive thank you to you, Adam, for your session. So thank you very much to the Radcliffe School and uh, no worries if you have to log off now. Um, Adam, we've still got a few minutes uh, left, though, and of course this session is being recorded for uh, lots of other young people to, to watch uh, afterwards. So I'd like to ask you uh, just another couple of questions myself, if that's OK. Of course, yep. Um, it's wonderful to... Uh, speak to someone who works at a car factory, but uh, isn't uh, an, an engineer who doesn't, you know, make cars because it's, it's really wonderful to uh, understand that there are lots and lots of different roles that go into making cars like yourself. Um, I would wonder if you could just briefly touch on some of the other departments and some of the other, um, uh, other work that goes into uh, the end product. Yeah, of course. So I mentioned previously um, that our engineering and manufacturing areas are our biggest areas, um, but I, I won't go into them, but we also have our support functions. So again, I work within HR who look after the people elements, but also some of the uh, benefits, so pay um, and also some of the on-site catering, you know, or everything that touches the, um, the colleague journey will be looked after by HR. We also have purchase, which is a probably the, the one that stands out to me is something I'd never really considered. So as an organisation, we purchase a lot and we also deal with a lot of contracts. Um, so obviously we purchase parts, we purchase um, services, we purchase systems uh, and there's a function dedicated to what that purchase process looks like because of the organisation that we work in. Um, we need to adhere to certain policies and procedures, but also we have a, um, a lot of ability to negotiate um, and Kind of define what our pricing structures look like so really really interesting part of it there's also our quality department who have a lot of overlap with both manufacturing and engineering but they come at it from a very quality of our vehicles point of view so that goes from um quality of the things that you can actually touch and feel within the car but also what i find absolutely amazing is that we actually have a laboratory on site so the, the um materials that are in our car so the leather on our seats is tested in you know, hot weather, cold weather, tested by different chemicals. Um, so that's a really, really interesting part of it as well. So if, you, if you're wanting to take more of a scientific route, you know, we still have opportunities available. We have sales and marketing as well. So obviously the people that focus on how our cars are communicated to customers, set our pricing strategies, you know, and what markets that we enter, uh, where our opportunities are, you know, that's a, that's a very big function, a very key driving function. Um, we also have our design department as well. So they do sit within engineering, but we design our vehicles, of course. So, you know, we um, use CAD a lot. We do have still some, some play modeling going on, um, but we do do a lot of it um, on CAD design now. I'm trying to think what else that we have going on. Um, but I'd say that they were the 
key functions really. I don't know whether I could just skip back actually um, to if you can still see the presentation, some of these areas here. Of course, IT as you would expect um, and finance as well, but you could probably um, things that you would expect a, a large organization to, to be part of as well. So yeah, I think I think that covers uh, the ones that I find the most interesting that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of being part of an organization. Thank you. Um, OK, and um, so you mentioned or you, you talk quite a lot about your your Be Proud network, which you uh, co-founded, which is um, absolutely amazing. Uh, it looks like you've done a, a wonderful work there and, and lots of organisations now are building these networks here at GMCA. We have the, the, the Rainbow Network, for instance, and I was uh, wondering if you could talk a little bit about why it's so important and what it means to you yourself to be part of such a network? The, the reason it is so important is probably going back to some of those figures that I showed earlier about the situation for LGBTQ plus people in society and then also focusing a little bit more on what LGBTQ plus looks like within uh, an organisation. You know, we are a 103 year old organisation. We are a automotive manufacturing and engineering business. So that naturally over time has not really been the most diverse um, diverse environment, particularly for LGBTQ plus people. Um, so we do have some difficulty, or well, we could have some difficulty with who we attract from that from outside internally. We've got a huge education piece to do with the people that work for the organisation. Um, and also we need to make sure that, you know, if we want to achieve our Beyond 100 strategy for our vehicles, uh, we need to make sure that we have a hugely diverse workforce uh, that can consider perspectives um, from from all different walks of life. So I'll give you I'll give you an, an example um, that's not specific to LGBTQ plus, but particularly between the difference between males and females. And this is an automotive issue that a lot of crash test dummies are actually modelled on male uh, male anatomy rather than female anatomy. So you can only imagine the difficulties that that could cause for female passengers and actually female drivers as well. So that is the kind of um, thing that we, we need to battle against to make sure that um, as an organisation we're considering all different perspectives um, from all walks of life. So that's why it's important. That's why we need to do what we do. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, really good answer. And just kind of on, on that, um, and thinking about some of the figures that you that you brought up about you know, two thirds of LGBTQ plus people aren't comfortable holding hands with a uh, with a same sex partner. How how what what would you say to yourself uh, to your younger self uh, when you were in high school? Uh, probably be less concerned about other people's opinion. Would probably be the, the biggest one. I'm. As a person, I, I don't think I've ever been uh, in a situation where I felt um, discriminated against because of my sexuality, which is an extremely, extremely privileged position to be in. And that is definitely not the case for a lot of my LGBTQ plus friends and colleagues. Um, but even so, it's a lot of that internalised shame. Um, in fact, I'm reading a great book at the moment. Uh, if anybody's still listening to this, I would urge you to go out and read The Velvet Rage. Uh, which talks a lot about internalised homophobia and shame as well, growing up um, as a gay man. Uh, even though I'm out and comfortable and have been since I was about 17 years of age, uh, reading that information really talks about how um, we grow up in a society that isn't necessarily yet geared towards gay, uh, gay men uh, and what that can do emotionally and um, psychologically as well, which can be quite detrimental. So what I would say is as part of that, which I've learned since and I'm still learning, it's still a growth journey, is to care less what people think um, and also try and avoid some of that um, that damaging shame that we can potentially feel as, as gay men. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, we've had uh, one more question from the school, uh, so I think we will um, we will have this one and then I think we will leave the session there. Thank you so much uh, Adam for your time today. So the, the, the final question is uh, bringing it back to Bentley. Why did you choose to work at Bentley over other car manufacturers? Oh, come on, it's Bentley. Who doesn't want to work <laughs> at Bentley Motors? You know, it's, 
I mean, growing up, my, my, like I said, my first word was car. More than aware of what Bentley vehicles meant in society and also within the engineering community. Um, you know, the fact that one of our one of the heaviest vehicles, road vehicles, uh, we can get to move at uh, a couple of hundred miles an hour is an engineering um, feat. Um, and the reason it wasn't any other manufacturers because I felt it was somewhere that I would have that extraordinary experience and that's what I wanted from my career. You know, it really, really is a cool place to work and that, that has really been embodied even not more so since since starting. So um, again, it comes back to that that little boy in me that sees a Bentley and just, you know, is really excited by that and it still it still happens today. Um, so that is that is why it was Bentley. That's wonderful. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Adam. Um, so on behalf of everybody uh, uh, who's watching today, thank you to Adam White for, uh, from Bentley Motors for uh, speaking about uh, speaking about your work and what you do. Um, so thank you for attending this Meet Your Future session. You can keep up to date with all things going on in Greater Manchester at the uh, GMAX website, uh, which I mentioned at the start, GM acs.co.uk there's all sorts of information there for young people in greater manchester on careers and pathways and uh, thank you ever so much have a fantastic day thank, thank you very you. much for having me thank you jamie thank you